Hello everyone, my name is Ujwal and today we're going to solve a simple but slightly tricky spatial analysis problem. First, I'll explain the problem and maybe you can pause the video and try to solve it yourself. And then I'll present a few of the solutions ranging from simple to the most elegant one. So let's dive right into it. So here's the problem. We have one layer of building footprints extracted from OpenStreetMap. I have changed it slightly to make the challenge more interesting. We have building footprints as polygons and the polygons are different shapes and sizes. And the task is to extract all the polygons which have holes in it. So use your favorite spatial analysis tool and try to extract all the buildings which have a polygon with some holes in them, right? So this is a polygon with no holes. You should not extract that. But then this is a building with four holes. So you should extract that. A uh, slight uh, complication here is that not all polygons are simple polygons. There are multi-polygons. That means each polygon can have multiple parts and you need to be able to extract the holes from all the parts as well. So pause the video and try to think about how would you go about solving the problem. And you, know, you can apply any of the, your favorite spatial analysis tools and see if you can extract these buildings. All right, so let's talk about the solution. The main concept here is that a polygon is made up of one outer ring and zero or more interior rings. And if you have an interior ring in a polygon, that gives it a hole. I covered this concept in a more detail in another video, I'll link to that. But here we can use that concept and say, let's extract all the polygons that have one or more interior rings. Uh, QGS, I'm in QGS 3.16. QGS has a function called num interior rings. And let's see if we can apply that on this layer. We can say num interior rings of this geometry. If it's greater than zero, then this is a polygon that has got a hole in it. So let's see if this uh, select by expression works. So I'm just gonna apply this expression and you can see it selected 44 features and it caught all the polygons with holes, right? So it looks like it caught everything, but it misses this one particular polygon. And this polygon, it misses it because there are two parts to this polygon. This is a multi-polygon, and this is the first part which doesn't have any interior ring. The second part does have one. So while the solution works, we are still uh, missing one of the, the features that has a hole in it. So uh, we need to do some additional processing. So we can, uh, if you want to use the same approach, we can simply convert this layer from a multi-polygon layer to a single polygon layer. And here in QGS, you can use the processing toolbox and uh, use this algorithm called multi-part to a single part. And here we'll take the buildings layer and now we have uh, converted it into a single part layer. That means if there was a feature with multi-polygons, it's split into two different features. So now you can see this particular polygon is now split into two separate polygons. And now in this layer, if we apply the same expression, we'll be able to use that. So we'll just apply the same expression, num interior rings, zero. And you can see now it caught the 45 features that we wanted and it also caught the buildings. So this is a two-step process and this is a perfectly valid solution. You can use the algorithm extract by expression and then it'll extract all the features that match the expression into a separate layer. So, so this is one solution, it works, but then if you want to do this in a single step using the expression engine, that is a slightly better solution. So let me show you how that works. I'm just gonna remove the single parts layer and we'll just work with the, the buildings layer here. So I'm just gonna use the select by expression just to demonstrate the concept. So to iterate over each part of the geometry, we can use this function called array for each. And this is a very helpful function that allows you to give, given a list of things, it allows you to iterate over it within the expression engine. So first we'll create a, a array, which is a list from one to the number of parts that each geometry has. So we can use this function called num geometries and let's see how it works. So
So now this will generate a list containing numbers from one till how many parts uh, that the polygon has. If the polygon has two parts, it'll give a list like one and two. And then we can use this array for each function. And say for each of these items in this list, uh, you do something. And you can refer to each item within the list using this at element uh, expression. So now we have this numbers like one, two. We can use this another geometry function called geometry n, which is giving you the nth geometry from a multipart geometry. So we can use an expression like this that for each of these numbers one to 10, extract the geometry n from the given multipart geometry. And then you can see now I have a list of a geometry. And if it had two parts, you'll have two polygons that you get. And now that we have the polygon, uh, and this will all be single polygons, we can now apply the same function that we used earlier, which is num interior rings. So we'll say, how many rings do this uh, polygon have? And if it's got an interior ring, it's gonna give you a number like uh, one, two, three, et cetera, right? And uh, we'll now go and say, if uh, there are zero, interior rings, we want to remove that feature from the list. So we'll use this array, remove all zeros, right? So then it'll remove all the uh, count of features, which is zero. So if there was a, just a single polygon with no interior rings, that will not, the, the result of that would be an empty list. So now once we have a list, we can just check saying array length of this whole thing is greater than zero. That means if there are any parts in the geometry which has got one or more than interior rings, you have a non-empty list and this expression will match those. So now when we run the query, we get 45 matching features, including this one, which is a multi-part geometry. So this was a slightly longer expression, a little more complex, but I thought I'll cover this because it's an interesting uh, way to iterate over features in the expression engine and you might find many applications. I posted this uh, challenge on Twitter and LinkedIn, and one of the solutions that emerged was that you don't need to even do this complicated expression to uh, find all the multipart features. The concept is if there's a, a single polygon with an interior ring, then uh, the total number of rings in the polygon would be two because there's one outer ring and one inner ring. If it's a polygon with two rings, then the, the total rings will be three. So the total number of rings in a polygon would be at least one because every polygon has at least an outer ring and then one or more uh, or zero or more interior rings. If it's a multi-part geometry, you can say uh, there are two parts to the geometry and then the total number of rings would be two if it's a simple polygon. If it's a polygon with the whole, then the number of total rings would be more than the number of parts. So one simple expression that we can use to extract the features is to check if the total number of rings in a polygon is greater than the total number of parts in the geometry. So if it's a single part geometry, you should have more than one ring for it to be a polygon with a hole. If it's a multi-polygon uh, with say two features, two polygons inside, yeah, it should have more than two rings to make it a polygon with a hole. So this is quite simple and it can work. So let us see if, uh, if the solution works. So I'm just going to uh, show you how to extract that to a separate layer. So we can use this algorithm extract by expression and we'll apply this expression, which is num, num rings, which is gives you the total number of rings from a geometry, not only the interior rings, but the outer rings as well. So the number of rings should be greater than number of geometries. That means if this is true, then the polygon must have a hole. So let's see if, uh, if that works. 
Ta-da. And now you can see just with the simple expression, we were able to extract all the buildings with the whole, including the multi-polygon one. So I really like the solution. Thanks to all the folks on Twitter who posted the different solutions. And finally, uh, uh, it was uh, this particular solution emerged out of the discussion there. And I hadn't thought of this particular approach earlier. So uh, thanks to all of that, I'm going to post all the different uh, solutions that people have posted in the descriptions. If you like to see what are the different approaches to solve this particular problem? Uh, you can look at that as well. I'll cover one more solution using SQL or SQL. There are many people who posted SQL based solutions. So if you're working with a database like PostGIS, you can apply uh, a similar expression uh, using SQL and you can uh, create a new layer with uh, buildings with holes. I want to show you uh, a demo of that using the OGR tools. Uh, if you're not familiar with GDAL OGR, they are really powerful command line utilities. I have a full course on that. I'm going to link it in the description. But I will see how we can apply the same concept to extract a layer. Uh, using SQL using GDAL tools. So here we are in a terminal. Uh, we'll see that that is the test data geo package. Uh, it's available here. I'm just going to uh, query using OGR info and see uh, what layers we have. So here uh, we see there's a, it's a geo package layer with one layer called buildings. So first, let's just see how many features does it have. So we can use this uh, flag summary only uh, and AL, which is all features. And uh, we'll can print the summary of the layer. And here it says there are 10,000 features in this particular layer. So there are 10,000 polygons. So now let's run an SQL query to select a subset of this polygon layer. So we're going to do OGR info. But then we'll run an SQL query. So the SQL query will go something like this. Select star from buildings where, and here we can enter uh, uh, where expression. Uh, OGR can use a uh, spatialite syntax. So we can use the spatialite spatial functions and the functions uh, uh, for selecting the number of rings and number of interior rings is ST and rings. So this ST and rings of geom that will select the total number of rings for uh, each geometry. And we will check if that number is greater than the num geometries. Right, so this is a very similar expression that we applied in QGIS, but this is a, a SQL function uh, from Spatialite. And we'll just specify that the dialect that we are using is SQLite. So let's see what's the output of this. Oops, we didn't specify the name of the data set. So I'll just give this data. And now you can see the result is 45 features, which is the same answer as we got previously. So we'll take the same uh, query and we'll use it with the OGR to OGR tool, which allows us to create a new layer out of the query. So we'll just say OGR to OGR, We have a, a geo package called test data. We we'll just create a new layer within the geo package. So the input and output will be both test data, and then we'll say update this geo package instead of creating uh, a new layer. And then we'll use the NLN flag to say name the new layer buildings with holes. And now we can run the same. Query and you can see it just finished uh, very fast. And if I switch back to QGIS, you will see that the I have a new layer in my geo package here, which is the buildings with holes. And this was uh, created by the OGR command that we just ran. And you can see the answer is exactly the same. Hope you enjoyed this challenge. We received many submissions from the challenge that we posted on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm going to link some interesting ones in the description, so do check them out. If you like the challenge or if you have an interesting solution, do let me know in the comments. See you in the next video. Thank you.